Hello everyone. Welcome to another episode at Wackerash Gaming. So I ask you my dear mammals, how can I help you with mining mayhem? A. Do I make a full guide from start to finish? B. Do I make a questions and answer video? C. Do I share with you life gameplay with subtitles on how to play mining mayhem? You overwhelmingly voted for A. A full guide from start to finish. Therefore, here it is folks. I've added chapters, so I can appreciate, if you may not want to sit through the entire video, feel free to skip to the chapters of your interest. Today's video was put together with the help of Persephone from State 432, thank you. If you enjoy my videos, please do smack that subscribe button, leave a comment and turn on the notification bell for more amazing videos. Mining Mayhem The Basics. This is a 7 days event that begins on Monday with the final held on Sunday. Once you are locked in the Alliance, you will not be able to leave the Alliance until the following Tuesday. So beware of this, as the Alliance members will be locked in for the week. This is a monthly based Alliance event. The first battle will commence from Wednesday, and it will be daily, for an hour per day until Saturday. If your Alliance qualifies for the final, the final will take place on Sunday, and this battle will also last for an hour. The Mining Mayhem Battle Map will consist of eight alliances divided into the left side of the map with four alliances, and the right side of the map with another four alliances. There are two types of objectives, solo objectives and alliance objectives. The first type of points to score is solo points, these will be used to hit daily targets, to collect the reward crates. Then there is an overall ranking added for kills and energy tower charges. To receive all reward and crates a player has to also complete solo missions. Solo missions will be based on any kind of activity inside the battlefield. To earn points, you can see the list below as reference. The second type of points to score is Alliance Objectives. Each day the Alliance will have objectives to take a certain amount of research labs of each type each day. On the fifth day, the daily Alliance objective for the top winner of each division will battle for the R5 Amethyst Center lab. This is important, do not permanently leave the Mining Mayhem Arena if you are playing. You can enter your settlement, albeit with limited functionality. If you exit completely, you can no longer re-enter the event for that day. Day 1 is the registration stage, is pretty chilled, with the only action needed is to register the alliance. Only the top 10 alliance in the state, based on the rankings at the beginning of the matching stage will be eligible to participate in Mining Mayhem. Any R5 and R4 can register the alliance for participation. There will be a number of time slots to select from, and the leadership team needs to select three options in the order of the Alliance preference. Once registered, members can still leave the Alliance until 2359 UTC, but will no longer be able to leave for the duration of the event from Tuesday 0000 UTC onwards. If the Alliance is in the top 10, but forgot to register, the system will automatically register the Alliance, and unfortunately the system will also designate a time that may not be good for you or your Alliance. Day 2 is the matching stage which is kind of a non-event as matching takes place somewhat instantly from 0000 UTC and you will find out your opponents pretty much instantly, within the first 30 minutes. There are a number of divisions, and your alliance will be assigned to one of these divisions. Master, Elite, Veteran and Rookie, and your matching will be with alliances based in your division. Further, enhancements has been announced now, where alliances will be matched based on a certain matchmaking ratings based on the strength of the top 30 active alliance members. Day 3 is Mine Exploration. This is the first day that you will enter the battlefield. You have to take note, Mining Mayhem runs on new battle engine. So rally leaders and rally joiners use heroes that you would typically use when you play Capital Clash, bunkers or facilities. To enter Mining Mayhem, there are three key requirements. One, no troops marching or reconning. 2. No troops in blast shelter. 3. No settlement reinforcements. So, yes you can enter mining mayhem if you have troops in the hospital, and yes you can enter mining mayhem if you have troops in enlistment. I would recommend that all rally leaders to activate your settlement buffs. The style of play is similar to reservoir raid, so I would also recommend that everyone uses war talents. It is important to take note, your troop amount inside the Mining Mayhem event will be calculated at start of the event, upon which these troops will be replicated to use in the Mining Mayhem arena. Troop losses that can only happen if you are to attack another settlement, as the hospital cannot overflow in this event. When losing troops inside the event, players will only lose a troops within the Mining Mayhem arena, but will not lose in actual in-game troops. 
There are no points gained in attacking settlements. Attacking settlements will cause permanent losses to the attacker, but only within mining mayhem. So unless you have plenty of troops, I would avoid attacking settlements altogether. The first day, when you enter the mining mayhem battlefield, each alliance will start at their respective safe zone, marked with either a red or green circle. Only, at the first day the alliances will spawn in the safe zone, in the safe zone you are safe from any attacks, and the enemy will not be able to attack or teleport into this area. The spawn points of each alliance will be decided on the first battle day, the divisions are predetermined. Please note, the R1 Amethyst Research Lab in the safe zone will only be opened on the first day of the Mining Mayhem event. Also, you will have four rally timer options. 30 seconds. 1 minute. 3 minutes and. 5 minutes. I've never been able to fill a rally in 30 seconds, that's way too fast, but generally 1 minute or 3 minutes rally are what I expect most survivors to generally use. After 10 minutes, you will gain full control of R1 Amethyst Research Lab, and the road connection should allow you to move to Amethyst Research Lab R2 and so forth. Your control of the Amethyst Research Labs needs to have road connection to the other labs. This means that you will need to secure the Amethyst Research Labs in the correct order to move on to the next labs. When viewing the map, the glowing red lab indicates that this is the only current lab you can contest. Building Control Times each research lab will take a certain amount of time upon occupation for your alliance to gain control. The winning alliance will be decided based on the highest cumulative occupation time in the respective Amethyst Research Labs. Control of R1 Amethyst Research Lab, control time is 10 minutes. Control of R2 Amethyst Research Lab, control time is 20 minutes. Control of R3 Amethyst Research Centers, control time is 30 minutes. Control of R4 Amethyst Research Centers, control time is 40 minutes. Control of R5 Amethyst Research Centers, control time is 40 minutes. If the fighting continues until the end of the hour-long battle, the alliance with the longest cumulative occupation time with by default gain control of the building, event though the control time as noted above was not achieved. This concept is very similar to Capital Clash, where the alliance with the longest cumulative occupation time will secure control of the lab. Next let's touch on auxiliary buildings. When a research lab is secured and a captain is assigned to the building, the designated person will be shown the following. The captain has responsibility to build the auxiliary buildings. The auxiliary buildings provide extra battle stats for the whole alliance within the mining mayhem arena. The auxiliary buildings can be built by the assigned captains. The captain cannot be an R3, they cannot build the auxiliary buildings even after being assigned as captain. Each of the auxiliary buildings will provide their own type of benefit during the battle. The boosts from all auxiliary buildings buildings are cumulative and stack on top of all stats of the All Alliance members. There are five types of military auxiliary buildings. 1. Amethyst Weapon Plant, giving the Alliance additional troop attack of 22%. 2. Amethyst Armor Plant, giving the Alliance additional troop defense of 22%. 3. Stamina Training Center, giving the Alliance additional troop health of 22%. 4. Assault Training Center, giving the Alliance additional troop lethality of 22%. 5. Officer School, giving troop morale plus 1. There are a further four types of economic auxiliary buildings. 1. Construction Workshop, giving the Alliance additional 10% construction speed. 2. Vigor Lab, giving the Alliance reduction to stamina cost by 10%. 3. Vehicle Workshop, giving the Alliance additional 3% march speed. 4. Regen Lab, enables instant heal for Alliance members. Therefore from a strategic point of view, since you can only build one type of military, an economic building following control of each Amethyst Research Lab, this gorilla will advise you to build Officer's School, giving troops morale of plus 1, and Regen Lab at R1 Amethyst Research Lab. This is because no one can destroy these auxiliary building as it is built within your safe zone. Another reason why I ask you to build the officer's school at R1 Amethyst Research Lab is because troop morale is a new element in the battle. There has been clarification from the developers which states that the alliance that has advantage on troop morale will have an additional 20% damage buff. If both sides have the same then the effect of this additional buff will be equal. Following controls of R2 Amethyst Research Lab, this gorilla will give you another strategic tips to build a salt training center, giving troops lethality of plus 22% and another regen lab. By having two regen lab, your alliance members are now able to heal twice in the duration of the mining mayhem event. 
By securing these labs, your alliance will receive alliance points based on the type of amethyst research lab controlled at the end of each day. The points rewarded for each lab are as follows. Control of R1 Amethyst Research Lab. Your alliance will be rewarded with 1200 points. Control of R2 Amethyst Research Lab. Your alliance will be rewarded with 2000 points. Control of R3 Amethyst Research Centers. Your alliance will be rewarded with 3200 points. Control of R4 Amethyst Research Centers will be rewarded with 4800 points. A few other things that is worthy to note. 1. You only get a limited amount of free relocators during the Mining Mayhem event. You will get two relocators at the start, and each 15 minutes you will receive a free relocate. 2. You can only build two auxiliary buildings of each specific type, meaning each type of auxiliary building, either military or economic, you can only build a maximum, if two of the same type. 3. The Regen Lab, auxiliary building, can only be used once each day, because the Regen Lab has a cooldown period. After use the cooldown is quite long, thus typically you can only use it at the next day the earliest. Energy Tower. Alongside each research lab, you can find an energy tower. This energy tower provides temporary buffs and skills connected to the research lab that you're fighting at. The gathering of the amethyst will now automatically feed into the energy tower. However, to obtain the temporary buffs and skills the R5 or R4 needs to make sure that it is manually activated. Next let's talk about gathering amethyst. When in battle for a research lab there will be amethyst research tiles in the same area as the lab. Mining amethyst mine and charging them gives a significant amount of points, so do not underestimate the importance of this task. This gorilla will advise you to send two to three marches to help to hold buildings, but to always keep three marches at all time collecting the amethyst tiles. There are three levels of amethyst tiles, with level three providing the most amount of returns. Do not waste speed ups rushing to level 3 as it will be the most attacked of the mines when the enemy is around, and level 2 can be as attractive if it isn't being attacked frequently. Day 4 Meteorite Fight, Day 5 Grand Showdown and Day 6 Final Moment are a lot of the same battles where your alliance would choose to either be on the defensive or go on the offensive to secure a more research lab. The more research lab your alliance control at the end of each day would be more alliance points, more alliance points mean better ranking. If your alliance wins the top rank of your division, the your alliance will get the opportunity to battle on the Sunday, Battle of Glory. Another guerrilla strategic tip for you, you should never lose control of the R2 Amethyst Research Lab. This is the lab that is closest to your safe zone. Lose this and your opportunity to progress to be the winner of your division will be severely compromised. The Battle of Glory is the final event between the winner of Division 1 versus the winner of Division 2. The battle will commence over the control of R5 Amethyst Research Hub. This is capital style clash battle with a central building and four towers. That's all folks. Thanks for watching. If you like my videos please do subscribe, leave a comment and turn on the notification bell for more amazing videos.